this is uh, part three to the cross stitch tutorials and today I'm going to be talking about um, accessories in general so I'm gonna split this up into three different categories so we've got necessities um, which you do need mid-range which are things that you would enhance your cross stitching with but aren't necessary and then the last um, section is going to be for serious stitches. Now they are totally optional things that you do not do not need to stitch with, but if you really like the hobby and you wanted to splurge a bit, that's what that section is going to be about. The necessities are your fabric, your floss, your pattern, your needle, and something to put your thread on. Also scissors, because you're going to need some scissors so we'll start with fabric first with fabric you have so many different choices available there is hand dyed fabric there is gridded fabric which people call easy count fabric which is what I personally use for all my full coverage cross stitches there's Ada there's Lugana there's um, I think my my easy count is called even weave I think but there's so many different types of fabrics that you can get out there um, and they come in a whole range of prices so it also depends on the count as well that you'll be stitching on there's even things like plastic that you can stitch on but for now we'll just stick with standard ADA so you can find ADA pretty much anywhere um, a good place to look is Amazon because they have a fair few different counts on there and they have things like a different colour. I wouldn't advise um, stitching on black if you've just started cross stitching because black is quite hard to see um, the holes. It's even on a 14 count which is, so 14 count has larger holes and even that is harder. In terms of fabric when you're first starting out you'll probably be looking at 14 count Ada. I actually really don't like 14 count Ada. I don't like the feel of it. Um, it's very rough, but you can squish and crunch up your Ada to make it softer. So if you've got a stamped kit, for instance, and you feel it's really rough, just give it a scrunch. It doesn't affect the um, ink on the canvas at all. But Ada can be very tough to work with sometimes, and I don't particularly like it. My sweet spot for fabric is 25 count easy count Lugana or even weave I can't remember but I will put a picture here of the one that I always buy from the same seller every time and they're available in different sizes I have got a cross stitch pattern that I'm stitching 28 count and it's a little bit too small now the higher the number that you go on your cross stitch fabric the smaller the holes will be where your needle goes through so just keep that in mind if you use a 14 count the holes will be bigger if you're using a 28 count or a 32 count they are going to be so tiny um, so you either really need to have good eyesight or you need some sort of magnifier because it's it can get quite difficult and it also depends on the lighting and things and the color of the fabric um, there is lots of sellers on Etsy that sell hand dyed fabric it's personally not for me because I like my fabric to be gridded and with hand dyed fabric you usually can't wash it so even after your cross stitch is finished you can't wash the fabric so you need to bear that in mind as well they can vary in prices depending on the count and the size and etc so once you've figured out what count you want to stitch in then you can look at your fabric but if you want to keep it budget friendly for now my suggestion would be to decide what count you want to do it on and then find somewhere like Amazon Lakeside Needlecraft is another one that's really good uh, Hobby Jobby that I've just found recently myself apparently has fabric I haven't actually looked though but you've got um, Lovecraft I think sell fabric as well but just Figure out what count you want to work with first and then go and find something that's the cheapest for you because fabric goes up and down in prices depending on where you get it from. Next is floss. So I personally don't like DMC and DMC floss is the most popular 
floss that you will use for cross stitch you will see it everywhere my favorite is cxc and what cxc is is basically a cheaper version of dmc so they color match to dmc but not always 100 percent. so dmc will have have a better color but cxc is cheaper for me considerably cheaper and i prefer cxc to how plump the thread is compared to DM DMC I find it to be very thin and CXC is very nice and plump so for me personally I will always choose CXC before I find DMC but there is other brands out there typically when you buy a PDF pattern you your chart will be charted for DMC thread so as a beginner it's best to stick with DMC unless the pattern specifically says something like Anchor Threads, because Anchor Threads is another brand of floss, but there isn't, typically the patterns come um, charged to DMC colours. So the, the, the DMC that you're looking for, if you would want to stitch with that, is called Standard Cotton or Mooline. I think in, in the UK it's called Standard Cotton, but everywhere else it's called Mooline. But they have so many colours. Um, if you're a diamond painter, you'll know DMC already because that's how um, diamond paintings are charged with the DMC colour code. So if you don't like the price of DMC, I would suggest looking at CXC. But it is sometimes harder to find. But if you're on a budget, CXC is brilliant because the price difference from, I think for me in the UK currently, it's about £1.50. For a skein of floss and what I mean by a skein of floss is this so this is how floss comes okay this is one skein so when a cross stitch pattern says you need five skeins of what color is this 905 that means you need five of these so if this was DMC these would be one pound fifty each so for just one color I would need five of these and they'd be 150 each but with CXC which is what this is um, it's typically I pay about 25p per skein so it's a huge price difference there let's go on to needles we'll keep this really simple my recommendation for you is to start with a size 24 or a size 26 needle from DMC they're about two pound on Amazon for a pack of five or six they'll do you for pretty much every single project I personally stitch with a size 26 needle um, but that's all you like needles you can get anywhere if um, you buy cheaper ones they might snap but I wouldn't get ones that are super long or really really sharp um, so my advice would be just to literally stick with the DMC branded 24 or 26 size needle they're typically between two and three pounds for a pack of five now thread organizers are another thing that you can use on a budget or you can have some really expensive ones so what you can do is get cardboard and put a hole punch through it and use that as your thread organizer um, I like to use plastic ones which look like this I get a pack of 10 I think from Amazon for about it's, it's under 10 pound I'll put a picture here of the ones that exactly the ones that I buy and all I do is label label them they're all different colors and that's not going to show now is it but all I do is label them with the colors that I want to go there I do it in numerical order so when I've got a pattern with hundreds and hundreds not hundreds but lots of colors I know that the colors from say 1 to 400 are going to be on that one and then you get the idea um, these are actually already labeled because I'm, I need to kit up my Christmas start but they're all in numerical order and you can buy stickers anywhere I recommend um, a lady on Etsy called Diamond Tribe and that's where these stickers are from here I will link her down below but if you see the numbers are the color of the actual floss that's going to be going on there so this is a green this is a red or an orange I can't yeah a red um, and they're brilliant and they were only a couple of pound, I think they were like two pound or something for a big big pack of stickers. So that is my recommendation, um, but there is other ways you can do it. So if the cheapest way is, say, a piece of cardboard, hole punch, 
write your number on, that's the cheapest one. Then you've got things like I just showed you here, which is really, really cheap. Um, there is other things called floss drops. Now floss drops you can get on Etsy and they're usually individual ones, like I said, with a bit of card and a hole punch, but they have a pattern on them. So they've got some sort of um, decorative pattern on there and they come usually, I don't know if you have to buy them separately or not because I don't, I don't personally use them, but you can buy rings to hold them all on. Um, they are, they can be quite pricey if you have a lot of colours in your cross stitch pattern. There's another way called bobbins, um, and I'll put pictures, going through this video I'll put pictures of, of the things that I'm talking about, so um, you might have seen them before but not known what they were called. So there's bobbins that you can use. Um, they are pretty cheap, but I actually find them really annoying to label, and um, I actually at the minute store my thread that I'm not using for anything, like my extra thread, on bobbins, and it's actually quite annoying to have to wind the bobbin up um, and keep, make sure that the stickers don't fall off for the numbers so I might be changing the way I do that soon. There is another really cheap and economical way to do it which I saw a YouTuber do. I cannot remember her name off by heart but I will put her name on the screen and I will comment, um, leave her channel name in the description. She's a lovely lady but what she does is she uses envelopes. So when she's stitching, she has an envelope for each colour and she stores them in a box and she goes through them like that. That's another really cheap and easy way and I actually think that I might start storing my extra floss that way because the bobbins that I'm using, when you cross stitch for a while you end up with a lot of leftover thread and the bobbins are getting so thick that I'm having to put the same colour on two bobbins and then not sitting and it's just annoying me. So I think what I'm gonna actually do is start the envelope method where I get a nice decorative box or two decorative boxes, get some small envelopes or even some of these Mylar bags. Now I use these on Etsy to sell um, my cover minders and things. So I might even start using these because somebody actually gave me some diamonds for a diamond paint and spare ones um, and they had them in these little Mylar bags with a sticker on the front and I thought that was really cool. Um, anything you can find really, you don't need expensive items. So the last one in the necessities is scissors and I don't think I really need to explain much about scissors but personally I use tiny little scissors, let me go get them. So these are my scissors. They are plain black normal scissors that I buy in Tesco's in a pack of two. When my kitchen scissors get blunt, they come with a smaller set. So I keep the smaller sets and I use them for cross stitch. However, if you want to spend a lot of money on scissors, you absolutely can. There are some really decorative, really nice um, scissors out there. I'll find some pictures and I'll put them here for you. Um, I wouldn't say they're too expensive. It depends where you shop from. You can find decorative stickers, uh, stickers? You can find decorative scissors pretty much anywhere. The Etsy sell them, um, places like eBay, cross stitch websites will sell them. Most of them, like Lakeside Needlecraft, I'm sure sell scissors. But if you really don't care, like me, because nobody sees your scissors but you, um, just stick with standard small kitchen scissors. They're really, really cheap. Now we'll get on to the mid range of cross stitch items. Personally, I would advise you to buy these things if cross stitch is something that you want to do. Um, so say if you've started a kit and you're really enjoying it, I would recommend buying these ones over time. Um, we'll start with hoops. So hoops, I definitely recommend to everybody. Really, I wouldn't say it's a necessity though because people do stitch in hand, but hoops for me personally are a necessity. I do not like stitching in hand. Um, and you can buy all sorts of different hoops, all different sizes, um, they come in different shapes as well, different materials, so the cheapest ones that you will probably find are plastic ones. Um, you can find them pretty much anywhere, Amazon again is a great place, I'll put a picture here of some that I found and you can buy them in packs in different sizes, so I would recommend when you first start cross stitching to get a pack of different sizes so you can um, have a look and see which one is the best size for you. 
depending on your actual pattern, you might not need a giant hoop, you might want a really small one. I prefer personally like stitching with a bigger hoop than what my my um, area is that I'm stitching. It's just, just me, so I would recommend getting some plastic hoops. You can buy wooden hoops, but I really don't recommend them personally. That's just, again, it's just a personal thing. I don't like them, they crack. They don't tend to do up that well for me. Some people have said that they're tighter than the plastic ones, but I think it depends on what plastic ones you buy because all of the plastic ones that I have compared to the wooden ones are actually really frustrating to use. Um, you can also get decorative hoops. Now, decorative hoops are something that you stitch a small pattern on with or around whatever you want to call it um, and then you actually hang it on your wall in the decorative hoop so it, it's it's basically the frame for the hoop for the for the cross stitch pattern so you can buy them anywhere again Amazon um, any good local craft stores probably have decorative hoops and plastic hoops and wooden hoops um, yeah, they're, they're everywhere, but just my recommendation starting out would be to be a, buy a five pack of plastic hoops. Because the next thing that um, is on this list is needle minders. I would definitely recommend needle minders. Um, do you need them? No, you can just put your needle through the fabric um, and not bother about it, but they do come in handy an awful lot. Now, I'm a bit biased when it comes to cover minders because I do make and sell them on my Etsy shop. Um, but you can go as cheap as possible. You can make them yourself um, with something and two magnets as long as it connects, as it holds the needle on top. You can make them yourself. There's loads and loads of different places you can buy cover minders from. Etsy's a big one. Um, you can be as cheap or as expensive as you like. I sell ones that are cheap. I think my cheapest one at the minute is £2 something £2.50 and then the most expensive ones I've got are £20 because they're handmade out of clay so you can be as um, frugal or as luxurious as you want with needle minders but I definitely do recommend them they are really helpful for when you want to do something and you just want to plop your needle on there and it doesn't get lost so next is storage bags now I definitely recommend storage bags because I do full coverage cross stitch patterns but you can go as cheap, again, you can go as cheap or as expensive as you like. My recommendation when you're first starting is some plastic see-through uh, cover bags, storage bags. So this picture here is what I actually use on my um, floss tubes. I think they, they, come in, they come in a big pack of um, different colours and I use them on pretty much all of my cross stitches and um, they're big enough for the full coverages that I do they're big enough to hold the fabric at the same time and the see-through so I can see which cross stitch pattern is which so I highly recommend something see-through if you have a lot of whips however you can also splurge now I have one bag that I had handmade um, and I wanted it because I knew I was going to be stitching this project for a long long time and unfortunately the bags that I use, the, the see-through bags, don't actually fit this cross stitch pattern because it's really large. Okay so I've got my two bags here, so this is a cheap bag, you know the plastic see-through ones and you can see my pattern straight through that so when that's I stick my cross stitches in a corner in this room I don't actually have anywhere that I store them properly I literally just throw them in the corner I know that's really bad but when I want to pick a cross stitch for the day I can see what is in it without opening it and then this one is the expensive well yeah the expensive one so this bag here is handmade it's got a lovely little zip You've probably seen this before if you've already looked at my um, floss tubes and inside is red and it holds literally everything. This hoop is huge in here and it holds all of the floss for it. This, this cross stitch pattern has about 120 colours or something crazy like that and all of it is in there. So because I've only got the one handmade bag I know exactly what's in that one. If I was to have handmade bags for all of my cross stitches, I probably would get confused because I can't see what's in there. If you're interested in the expensive, more expensive bags, there is a plethora of people on Etsy that sell beautiful bags and some are actually see-through. Some of them have like a window. 
that you can put your little pattern in so you know exactly what's in the bag. But that one that I bought was from a lovely lady at Sugar Skull Crafts. I will put her shop in the description below. Now the last thing in the mid-range section is cables um, or clips, something to hold your fabric. So if you do a full coverage cross stitch like me and you've got a lot of excess fabric, you've got your hoop or whatever and then you... Oh, I forgot to tell you about Q-snaps. So the final thing um, for the mid-range section would be something to hold your fabric. So that could be the magnetic clips. So say you've got like your hoop and you're doing a full coverage cross stitch and there's loads of overhanging fabric that you don't need at the minute because you're not stitching on that part. It can be quite annoying, but again, you can do it as expensive or as, or as cheap as you want. Now I have heard of a lovely lady called Crafting with Kay that uses clothes pegs and she what she does is she folds up her extra fabric and clips it with clothes pegs. That is a really cheap and easy way to move your fabric and I actually tried it a few days ago and it is a really good it was a really good solution actually and it doesn't cost you anything if you've already got clothes pegs hanging about. Um, but I have bought things like magnetic clips. I'll put a picture here and I do not rate them at all unless you can find a really good um, set with really good magnets they just don't hold they they're not that good um, in my opinion but there is a lot of other things out there um, they're not usually too expensive um, you can get some like little silicone I'll put a picture here because I can't remember what they're called but they're like these little silicone things that mold and you bend them and they will they will hold the fabric um, but typically for me I don't use anything I've been stitching for four years with literally nothing um, and I'm so used to having the fabric everywhere I usually whack it around my shoulder or something like you don't need them if you don't if it if the fabric doesn't annoy you don't worry about them but if it does try the clothes peg thing first don't go out and spend loads of money just try the clothes peg thing that Crafting with Kay suggested I'll actually link her channel down below um, and if you like the fact that the fabric's out of the way, then perhaps you can go on and find something else that's better. But yeah, I don't really, really worry about it that much. Um, there is things called grime guards that you can buy. I'll put some pictures here. I have some, actually. I've got, a, I've got one here. So this is a grime guard. And this does help hold the fabric in. You can see how much fabric is in there. Um, there's an awful lot. And for some reason my cross stitch pattern is stuck. You can see how much extra fabric is... Like this would all be hanging out all over the place typically. It doesn't really bother me. But I bought one of these, two of these grime guards to try them out. Um, they're not recommend. They're not really meant for things with massive amount of fabric like this. If you're doing something smaller, I would recommend a grime guard. It keeps the sides of your cross stitch clean, and it also helps keep the extra fabric inside. But Etsy again have loads of lovely sellers on there that um, will help you out with the grime guard because they're all handmade. Third and final uh, section or category is for people that really like cross stitching, want to do this as a serious hobby and have a bit of extra money to spend. You don't have to have any of these items. So the first thing is storage. Now as I said, you can go as cheap as you want, like I'm probably going to do, and get a box with some envelopes and some stickers and jobs are good. Um, but you can also buy things that are really expensive, like the DMC floss organizer it's called a I think it's called the master set and it comes with all of the flosses in it already I'll put a picture here it is very expensive um, and that's something that I would never buy because it just doesn't interest me it doesn't look very practical the drawers don't look big enough and I know that because I stitch a lot I'm going to have loads of excess fabric that isn't going to fit in something like that so storage can be as expensive or as cheap as you want again but there is massively big price differences on both sides, so it just depends on what you want to do. Uh, typically, a lot of people bobinate their thread and store it that way. Here is how I do mine at the minute, um, in these little plastic boxes. But again, as I said, because I have so much 
Fred and floss. Because I'm an idiot and I buy new floss every single time I um, kit up a new cross stitch, I don't go and look in my spares. So I've got loads of it lying about now. Um, I now have too much for these little these little boxes. But if you're just starting and you're only doing one project, that is definitely something to look at. It comes with all the bobbins with it. And I think it comes with the stickers as well. Now I put grime guards on the list as something that's like a splurge item, but we've already spoken about grime guards. Um, there is loads of different prices for things like grime guards and all of that stuff. So we won't talk about that again. Now larger frames. This is where things can get quite pricey. Um, you can buy things like a Lowry stand. I'll put that here. Something like this I would never buy in a million years just because it's something that doesn't interest me. But you can also buy lap stands that look like this. I bought this on Amazon uh, last week, I think, to record a video. And I don't like it. Um, as I said before, I prefer to stitch in, in hold the hoop in my hand. But you're meant to sit on this bit and it comes over your lap and then, and then you stitch. But to me, they're just awkward. I actually do have, I'll put a picture here of the one that I have. I do have a big scroll frame. Um, and I used it for about six months and then I've chucked it upstairs because I like, while I like it, I don't need to use it and I can only sit in one certain place while I'm using this giant scroll th th uh, frame. I can't sit in bed. There is a couple of other ones actually that are cheap. I'll put one here. It's like a little plastic, um, Q-snap type thing. Um, so we'll talk about Q-snaps now. Q-snaps are another type of frame, like a hoop, but usually, but they're either a square or a rectangle. Now they come in different sizes and they come in different prices. I would not recommend buying a Q-snap from somewhere cheap. You need to get, because they're terrible, they don't usually hold the fabric. Um, Q snaps obviously work on tension and I actually have a Q snap that I think is yeah it was an original one it, it was one from like the original Q snap brand I can't for the life of me remember the name of the company but I will put a picture here <gasps> excuse me um, but if you have a look on places like Timu, AliExpress and all that type of places they're typically not very good there is a little tip that you can use with a Q-snap though. Um, if you place something like kitchen roll or an old rag, I actually use an old rag under mine. Um, it's like an old shirt that I've chopped up and used for rags. So I put, I cut a little strip and on under each Q-snap side, I've put that over the fabric and then I put the Q-snap on and that just keeps the Q-snap a little bit tighter. But I still find myself twisting the Q snap from the sides and the top to make to get the tension back in the fabric of the cross stitch because if not it's kind of sags. Mm. Um, there is another tip that people have said that I haven't tried yet that if your Q snap starts getting a bit loose you can put them in boiling water and they should um, be tighter when you use them again. But for now if you're just starting to cross stitch I would not recommend Q snaps because depending on where you buy them from they can be terrible. Um, a lot of people recommend the Q-Snap lap stand, something I've never used, so I can't really recommend it or not. Um, but that would be a good idea if you were stitching in bed and you wanted it, or you were stitching in a chair and you want to still be mobile, but you also want it on a stand. I think that might be a good option. I might actually look into that one um, and see if it would be better than the stand that I've got to record on for if I ever do a stitch with me. But for now, I wouldn't really recommend Q-Snaps. We have two more things left, and one of them is magnifiers. Now remember I said right at the beginning of the video about your fabric count. If you pick something that's 28 count and you're stitching in a dim light, and you are a serious stitcher and you want a better experience, you can buy these really cool head magnifiers and they have like these glasses that come down. I'll find a picture and put it here. And they also have a light. It just reminds me of like a miner with a little light on their head. But you have like magnifying glasses and a lot of people swear by them. Now I don't actually need that. My eyes aren't that great, but I haven't ever got to the point where I've stitched on something that's so small I can't see it yet. 
so I haven't felt the need to buy them but they do look hilarious I love seeing people in them if you go on TikTok and things like that you can see people wearing them and it's, it's quite funny because you can see like your eyes are magnified so when you look someone's looking at you your eyes are like giant bug eyes and it is quite funny um, but you can also buy clip-on magnifiers so if you stitch at a table or a desk or you've got a little coffee table next to you you can clip the magnifier but I will say please be careful with these magnifiers because they are very dangerous um, with the clip-on ones do not have it anywhere near sunlight and make sure you cover up the magnifier when you're done because they start fires um, if the light comes through your window say my windows here so say if I clipped my magnifier I don't have one but say if I clipped a magnifier to this and I was stitching here and then I got up and left the magnifier uncovered it starts a fire and they're really dangerous and that happens really quickly and I also see someone not too long ago using one for diamond painting and that started to burn the diamond painting um, but luckily she was in she was in the house and she caught it but they are really dangerous so just please be careful because they're such a strong magnifier that um, they will burn something very very fast I'm actually going to quickly add on another thing to the expensive side of cross stitching um, which I've only just thought about Pattern Keeper so Pattern Keeper is really good I 100% recommend it I am like a Pattern Keeper big 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 fan of big 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 <laughs> big 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 fan of Pattern Keeper but it only works on Android so I've known people to go out and buy a tablet like me um, just to have Pattern Keeper and it is expensive. So Pattern Keeper, the app, isn't expensive. It's it's seven pound, I think, and then you get unlimited access to it forever. But if you're an Apple user or you're like me and didn't have a tablet in the first place, you're going to need to use a uh, have a working tablet that's big enough for you to see. Or you can, but saying that you can use your phone. But for me, that would have been way too small. Um, I have seen people have it on their phone and use Chromecast and stick it on their TV. But I just wanted to add that on as it's something that can be expensive but can be used cheaply as well. The last one is kind of an optional one and it's better lighting. Now, if you stitch in one place or certain places and it's like winter time like it is here for me now, lighting sometimes affects my eyes and it affects how long I can stitch for. Um, I don't actually have any extra lighting. I haven't went. I haven't gone out and bought any lamps or anything like that. But as I said before, it's the same with the clip-on magnifiers. You can buy tabletop lamps that clip on and move about. I do have one for my diamond painting that I recently invested in because this room does get quite dark. But for cross stitch, I don't use one. Um, some people have recommended using a light pad. So if you're a diamond painter and you already have a light pad and you want a better view perhaps um, with black fabric I know a lot of people recommend light pads with black fabric because you put the back black fabric over the top um, while you're holding it and the, and the holes light up um, for me that would give me a really bad headache because I have an astigmatism in my eye so I couldn't do anything like that anyway but lighting is another option there's so many different lights so many little portable lights and obviously if you buy the magnifiers you've got your little light on top anyway so you wouldn't need one but yeah i just wanted to add that in at the end it's just a really optional one again you can get it cheap or you can get it expensive um, so yeah i really hope you've enjoyed this video um i hope it's helped you figure out if you can afford to cross stitch but again you can make it as cheap as you want um the, the more expensive it is doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be more comfortable for you. Find what works for you, go for the cheapest options first, and if it doesn't work then go to the next thing. Um, cross stitch is a really long hobby, so I suggest finding things that make you comfortable because you're going to be stitching it for a long time, um, unless it's a small sampler. but. You, you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you on the next tutorial. Bye-bye.